now we're ready to solve an equation. And so we have uh, this equation that's given to us, x plus 1 or x squared plus 1 times the second derivative plus 2xy prime is equal to 0. Uh, we want to solve the initial value problem and we're going to assume that the equation can be written in series form c0 plus c1x plus c2x squared and so forth. Uh, so we're going to make a series substitution and here I have my derivative term worked out and I have my second derivative term worked out and we'll start by substituting into the differential equation there we go substitute into the differential equation so I've substituted in for my second derivative term this is my second derivative and I've substituted in for my first derivative term and now what we want to do is we want to try and combine terms but before we combine summations we want to uh, we want to rewrite these we want to bring all the x's inside the summation because I have two terms here because I have two terms here I'm going to distribute uh, so I have x squared multiplied by this first summation and then plus 1 multiplied by that summation and then this is my second or my last term here and now I'll bring these x squared this x squared in and bringing that x squared in will increase this exponent by 2 so I'll be left with an x to the nth there and here I can bring the 2x in that x to the first will increase this exponent by 1 so I have an x to the n power there and I'll also bring the 2 in bring the 2 inside okay so there's my x to the n here's my x to the n minus 2 that one did, didn't change here's my x to the n and I also brought the 2 inside So our next step is to make those substitutions and to change our variable from n to k. In this first case, we're going to let n or k equal n. Here we want k to be equal to m minus 2. Here we want k to be equal to n. Okay, so when k is equal to n, you're just replacing the variables. Uh, k equals m minus 2. Remember that means the same thing as uh, n is equal to k plus 2. So wherever you have the n, you replace it with k plus 2. And here n is equal to k, or k is equal to n. Making the substitutions, uh, on the first and the third term you're just replacing uh, n's with k's here on the second term or uh, when n is 0 you get k is 0 minus 2 or negative 2 n is k plus 2 n is k plus 2 and then n is k plus 2 minus 1 gives you the k plus 1 so now we have the same powers of x we have x to the k but we don't have the same lower limits we have k equals 0 k equals negative 2 and k equals 0 so this is where we need to expand this this middle term we need to bring out two terms where k is equal to negative 2 and k is equal to negative 1 
and then write the remaining terms using summation from 0 to infinity so that these limits match up. And so here's where I, I broke this down when k is equal to negative 2 and k equals negative 1. When k equals negative 2, this term, negative 2 plus 2, becomes 0, and this term drops out. That says 0. And when k is equal to negative 1, that gives me this term. And notice that this, this part, negative 1 plus 1, gives me a 0, and so this part drops out. And I'm left with the three summations. But now I have the same lower limits, and I have that same power of x, x to the k, for each term. And so I can factor out the x to the k. This is just a copy. I can factor out an x to the k from each term. So again, this one dropped out, this one dropped out. I'm going to factor out the x to the k. That comes out here. And I have my summation. k goes from 0 to infinity in each case. And then my other terms, or the other parts of the terms, is ck times k times k minus 1 is here. ck plus 2 times k plus 2 times k plus 1 is here. And my 2 ck times k is here, and that x to the k shouldn't be in there because I've factored that out. Now, from here, notice that I have like terms. This first term here and this last term both contain a ck, and so I'm going to combine those together. That's what I did here. Here's my ck, and and if I take my my uh, coefficients of ck, this if I multiply it out would give me a k squared minus k. Here I've got a plus 2k, so if I add 2k to it, notice I've got k squared and the negative k and the positive 2k combine to give me a positive k. I get k squared plus k, which factors into k times k plus 1. That's what I have here. k times k plus 1 times ck plus ck plus 2 times k plus 2 times k plus 1. When we solve these types of equations, these coefficients give us a relationship between the uh, k plus, in this case, between the k plus second term and the kth term. And that relationship is called a recurrence relation. Now, because we know that all of these terms have to add up to give us 0, that's what the equation says. We know that all of the coefficients of our x to the 0 terms have to add to give us 0, and all of our x to the first terms have to add up to give us 0, and so forth. So if we take the coefficients of each of our x's, that's defined by this recurrence relation, we can solve this for the, uh, for the, uh, uh, highest indexed constant, in this case k plus 2 is higher than k. I'm going to solve for the k plus second term by bringing my kth term over to the right side. That'll make it a negative. And then we want to divide both sides by k plus 2 times k plus 1. And 
notice that these k plus 1 terms cancel out. So I'm left with ck plus 2 is equal to negative ck times k divided by k plus 2. And this is my simplified recurrence relation. And I could use this to come up with the coefficients of each of my each of my terms to the equation. Remember that my solution is going to be in the form of y equals c0 plus c1x plus c2x squared plus n. All of these c's represent the coefficients of each one of those terms. So let's find those coefficients. We can find the coefficients by starting with k equals 0. Plugging in 0 for k, uh, we get c2 is equal to negative c0 times k is 0 over 0 plus 2. And because I'm multiplying by 0, I get 0 as the answer. So c2 is 0. And we're going to list our terms. k1, k equals 1, will give me my c2. 3 is negative c1 times 1 divided by 1 plus 2. That's negative c1 over 3. And then k equals 2 is going to give me my fourth term is negative c2 times 2 over 2 plus 2. And uh, c2 was 0. And so I get 0 because my k plus second term is based upon my kth term and my second term is is uh, is 0, all of my even terms are going to be 0. So c6 and c, c8 will also be 0. I really just need to, to work on my odd terms. c5 is negative c3 times 3 over 3 plus 2 and c3 is negative c1 divided by 3. Notice that these 3's cancel. The negatives cancel to leave me with c1 over 5. Uh, K, uh, c6 I know would give me a, a 0. And then c7 is negative c5 times 5 divided by 5 plus 1 and uh, c5 is c1 divided by 5 and these 5's cancel out you get negative c1 divided by 7 and so forth so this is the form of my answer y equals c0 plus c1x plus c2x squared and so forth and if I put in my coefficients I get c0 is not defined, c1 is not defined but all of my other terms are defined in terms of c0 and c1 all of my even terms except for c0 are 0 and then my odd terms Notice I get negative uh, c1 over 3, positive c1 over 5, negative c1 over 7. They'll alternate signs and the denominators match the exponent. Uh, if you break up your c0's and your c1's, these are all c1 terms, then you get c0 plus c1 and here I factored out the c1 to get x minus one third x to the third plus one fifth x to the fifth minus one seventh x to the seventh and so forth. Notice that I have two linearly independent solutions. I have one y1 is equal to one and I have a second linearly independent solution given by this, what I have inside the parentheses, x minus one third x to the third plus one fifth x to the fifth 
minus 1 seventh, x to the seventh, and so forth. And together they give me my general solution. Okay, so for for this problem we found the general solution. Now what we need to do is find the, the particular solution that corresponds with the uh, initial values y of 0 is equal to 0 and y prime of 0 is equal to 1. So substituting in uh, for y of 0 equals 0, we're going to uh, all of the x terms will become zeros and so all of these terms will drop out. These terms all become zero and c1 times zero is zero so we're going to be left with zero is equal to c0. c0 is equal to zero and so this term drops out of the general solution. To do the y prime of 0 is equal, is equal to 1, for y prime of 0 we need to take the derivative. And taking the derivative of each term, uh, notice that this first term, derivative of x is just 1. On the second term you're going to carry down the 3 and then decrease the power by 1. The 3 you carry down is going to cancel with the 3 that you get, that you have in the denominator. So you're going to get just minus x squared and then plus here you carry down the 5 which cancels with the 5 in the denominator and then decrease the power by 1 to give you 4 plus x to the 4th and, and so forth. You're going to get minus x to the 6th and that continues on. So substituting 0 in This is my derivative and then substituting 0 in, I should get 1 as my output and substituting 0 in, all these terms are going to become zeros so they all drop out and I end up with 1 times c1 which is c1, c1 is equal to 1. So c1 is equal to 1, c0 is equal to 0 and my solution is just what I have inside the parentheses. This is 0 plus 1 times all of this so I get y is just what I have inside parentheses. x minus 1 third x to the third plus 1 fifth x to the fifth minus 1 seventh x to the seventh and so forth. 